click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in this lecture we'll be studying the network structure or the architecture of 3GPP LTE. Remember we have been studying various architectures. This is one of the simplest architectures as compared to GSM and CDMA systems. Even here we have mobile stations, base stations, HSS which is a subscriber service station. Then we have the gateways and we have MME. <music> In this lecture, we will be studying the network structure in the LTE. The LTE network structure is extremely simple. There is only a single type of access point which is named as E node B. This is nothing but the base station that we have been studying. Each base station can supply one or more cells providing the following functionality. And this functionality is air interface communication and physical layer radio resource allocation and scheduling and retransmission controlling. Remember this network architecture is a simplified version of GSM as well as WCDMA. In the next diagram we can see the network architecture. In the extreme bottom we can see there are mobile stations. All these mobile stations are connected to the base stations. Multiple base stations are connected amongst themselves. And the interface between them is called as an X2 interface. The X2 interface is an interface between the different base station. The information that is important for coordination of transmission of adjacent cells, like for example, intercell interference reduction, these informations can be exchanged on this interface. Each base station is connected by the S1 interface to the core network. What is the meaning of core network over here? For LTE, a new core network, a system architecture evolution or SAE or enhanced packet core EPC was developed. It consists of mobility management entity MME serving gateway that is connecting the network to the RAN. RAN stands for radio access network and the packet data network gateway which connects the network to the internet. In addition with this, there is a different entity which is called as home subscriber server. Now let us see what are the functionalities of this core network. The core network fulfills the following functions. The first is the mobility management. Next is the subscriber management and charging. Quality of the service provisioning and policy control for user data flow. The last is the connection to the external networks. We all know what is a mobile station and a base station by now. Let us see what is the function of MME. The MME that is a mobility management entity plays an important role in LTE architecture. MME is a main signaling node in the EPC. According to the LTE, the LTE MME is responsible for initiating paging and authentication of the mobile device. The MME also retains the location information of the device at the tracking area level for each user and then selects the appropriate gateway during initial registration process. The main function of the serving gateway is routing and forwarding the user data packets. It is also responsible for E node B handovers in the U plane and provide mobility management between the LTE and other types of networks such as 2G, 3G, etc. The PDN gateway is connecting the node between the user equipment and external networks. It is the entry point of the data traffic for the user equipments. In order to access multiple PDNs, user equipment can connect to several PGWs, which is a PDN gateways at the same time. The functions of the PGW include policy enforcement, packet filtering, charging support, packet screening, etc. Other important role of PGW or PDN gateway is to provide mobility between 3GPP and non-3GPP networks. Last, we move on towards the home subscriber server or HSS. It is a key element of LTE. It is a master user database that's stored on a single node. 
it allows the communication service provider to manage the customers in real time and in cost effective manner. HSS allows the communication service providers to perform specialized function such as bearing of certain services and function, activation and deactivation of the SIM cards and the creation of hierarchical segregation of the subscribers based on their subscription. The role of the HSS is to communicate with the network and provide the subscriber profile and authentication information. The database stores the information about the subscribers to help in authorization, details of the device as well as the user's location and service information. So this is how the network architecture works in LT3GPP. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.